Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, and hello, everyone. Um, that's a great way to start um, the podcast today. I, I can't even get the first word out. Hello, um, but the show is, I guess, hello. I don't know. I don't really know what hello means. But anyway, um, hail and welcome, <laughs> everyone, to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Um, great to have you back. Great to be back, and uh, it's great to be here talking about what we're going to be talking about today. I've got a couple of guests, actually maybe more than a couple of guests, um, lined up for us this week. This uh, week's podcast is going to be kind of a continuation a little bit off of last week's episode, wherein uh, I, I talk about this uh, uh, stanza in the, the poem Voluspa that suggests a alter or alters the existence of, of such things in Asgard. And um, I was reached out to by somebody who wants to go a little bit further into all of this. And I love that idea because, you know, I can only really go so far with myself on, on these sorts of things. You know, like, uh, it's, it's, it's great to have people that want to come onto a podcast and, and talk about things where their minds are, you know, circulating about. So... Um, we're going to be bringing in some folks who have been on this podcast before. We're going to be bringing in um, somebody who's never been on this podcast who actually reached out to me through the Midgard Musings Facebook page, and I appreciate that. As I say all the time, you know, if you guys have thoughts or ideas or maybe you want to rap a bit, you know, chew the fat, as it were, about topics and such, um, things that are going on in your brain, or maybe something that is sparked curiosity in your mind of, of, of something that, you know, you heard either on this podcast or somewhere else to just reach out to me. Um, I invite it. I welcome it, you know, and um, this individual here um, who is the reason why we're talking about this again this week did just that, you know. Um, you guys can do it through a number of ways. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're not on Facebook and you want to reach out to me, you can email um, Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. You can call the Midgard Musings hotline, which is a, a Google voice number. So, you know, I don't use that number. It's, it's not like your number is going to be sold or anything, at least not by me. I don't know how Google works those things. But anyway, if you call the Google voice number, it's it's uh, 615-671-9832. You can call, you can leave a voicemail, I'll listen to it. Um, and even if it's just something that you say, you know, hey, this is just something I would like to maybe have for a podcast episode... Your voice can be featured. You can remain anonymous. Um, you know, just be sure to mention that when you uh, when you call in. Say, hey, you know, this is so and so, but I would prefer to, to remain anonymous on this. Um, it's a great way to have other voices shared and, and and heard on this podcast. So I invite it. I welcome it. And again, you can you can DM me on any of the socials that I receive DMs through. So Facebook and Twitter are the only ones that I have messages going through. I don't. Uh, answer messages or, or get messages on Instagram. Um, but, you know, commenting in, in threads of posts, uh, direct messaging me on either one of those platforms, emailing me, calling me, it's, it's, it's wide open, guys. Um, so I, I do appreciate that uh, we have somebody who is, you know, willing and wanting to explore this a little bit more and actually come on the podcast to talk about it. So, um, it's, it should be a really good time. This is actually going to be a, a, a multi-guest show today. So we've got, you know, more than just one guest coming on here, um, possibly two or three total besides, you know, besides myself. Um, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. I can't wait to get into it. Um, before we do, please be sure to, as I always say, um, check out the link tree link that's, you know, uh, linked in the uh, description or show notes of this podcast for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings and the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast collectively. 
uh, because it's one and the same, essentially. You know, I mean, I, 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 I don't really differentiate between the two, but all the ways that you can help support what I do on this channel, on the podcast, etc., cetera, um, it's in the Linktree link. So follow all the socials if you want you know, become a patron on Patreon, you can buy merchandise, you can become a channel member. There's all kinds of ways that if you want to monetarily support, I think there's also a, uh, a monthly like subscription that you can um, opt into for um, the podcast through Anchor. Anyway, it's it's all down in the description and in the show notes. So check it all out, see what fits you. Um, but at the very least, if you don't want to drop any dineros on, 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 this, on this guy here, then uh, just follow me, you know, subscribe, like, follow, um, share around, you know, as much as you're able to, wherever you're able to. Um, it's greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome in our guests. I'm, I'm going to leave formal introductions to when they arrive, so that way everybody's names get said properly and 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 no miss. Uh, you know, no nobody's misspeaking and, and saying things that we shouldn't for the safety and, and, the, and the protection and the, of, of people's privacy. So anyway, um, here we go. Let's let's get this show started on the topic of the 20th stanza and beyond the 20th stanza of of the Voluspa poem. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Uh, you know, I've been listening to my podcast, at least in the last year, uh, recognize his uh, face from the. Uh, episode where him and his wife Heidi were on here. So Helen, welcome back to you, Roger. And then we've also got a really awesome guest who I've been chatting with here for about the last 10 or 15 minutes offline. Uh, this is Rob, who is also uh, affiliated or associated into the in the uh, Runestone Heathens of Ohio Facebook group. So I'm going to just say, Helen, welcome to both of you gentlemen. And uh, Rob, if you want to just introduce yourself first, and then we'll go to Roger. Helen, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining. Thanks for um, having us, Jesse. I'm Rob, and I've been heathen for ever. <laughs> uh, I live not very far away from Roger and Heidi, <clears throat> and um, I've been the goatee of our kindred for a couple of years now. Awesome. I got to say real quick before we go on, I, I, and I mentioned this to you before, and I hope you don't mind, uh, uh, you've got the best like go the aesthetic going on here. I mean, the, the long silver <laughs> hair, the, the the everything, you know, very wizardly looking, you know, guys. Right um, so for those that are not watching this, if you're just listening to it, um, try to picture, try to picture uh, like Gandalf from from Lord of the Rings. If he got rid of the beard and, and, and uh, uh, you know, tried to like channel his inner Hulk Hogan. He's got this like <laughs> wicked long, cool Fu Manchu man, silver, long, silver, right. white, you know, just just great. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also have a three-legged cat, so. <laughs> <laughs> a three-legged cat. Yeah. That's interesting. He's my familiar. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Uh, and then we got Roger over here, who's yeah. again, just awesome guy. He's 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 done a lot of really neat uh, liar songs and, and stuff yeah, in, in the Runestone Brian. Heathens group. And, and you're, you you tap into that 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 bardic sort of scald energy yeah i i'm inspired by that and and uh yeah working on my own things spending a lot of time developing the liar skill and i'm getting ready to work some magic to create a white who is going to help me uh with poetic inspiration i'm getting the runic inscriptions ready to do and got a white carve so that's taking a little bit of time here recent recently for me but yeah, uh, Rob is a, a great, he's been a great help on my path, teaching me. He's been my main go-to person for the most part, you know, talk to a few other people, but I always generally run through Rob first. And we got uh, through RuneStone, we founded Twin Rivers Kindred a little over a year ago and been going pretty strong. We've, we've got some luck behind us, so hopefully it stays that way. That's great to hear. Um so yeah, I, I was I was talking to you mainly Rob, and then you joined earlier uh, before we started, you know, recording this. Um, you know, Rob here, he's he was talking earlier about how he's been heathen. He said forever. Uh, I think around the late eighties. Late eighties, yeah, right? about eighty eight, somewhere yeah. around about there. And which is I and I and I mentioned this to you before, but I want to just share with everybody. You know, it's it's awesome for me to to share company in this way, like this this virtual company. 
uh, with people who have been doing this for as long as I've been alive, because generally speaking, the audience that I keep have um, just been with people that have been doing this for as long as me or for less time as me. Uh, so I feel like I'm the the youngest one uh, out of all of us here. And so it's it's an honor for me to to be in in, in your guys's company. So uh, well, I just want to say you, thank you. You've been heathen longer than me, Jesse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've right. only been here a couple. I of am years. honored. I am honored to be here. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 a I think a mutual honor for all of us, right? Um, just in 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 that context, I think we we've each done things uh, that would carry with it uh, deeds that that would bring us honor. All right. Uh, I would yes. like to say that much. You know that honor is is something that is 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 recognized as through 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 living, through doing, through action, through deeds. Exactly. Yeah. I and uh, yes. I, I would say that that we're all here collectively, you know, uh, meeting in, in, in an honorable way. So we good are. stuff. Yeah. We're all hardworking pagans. That's for sure. <laughs> I'll concur. I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, Rob, you actually um, the, the reason why we're all here, you know, uh, you Rob, you had reached out to me through Facebook um, commenting on last week's podcast about the altars in Asgard or other altars in Asgard and the kind of the conversation that, uh, that, that, that topic sparked. So if you don't mind, I'm going to try to just take the back seat here. And, and what was it about that particular episode that, that you wanted to reach out to me about and, and further a conversation in? Well, <laughs> um, question. yeah, big question. So, <clears throat> I mean, Voluspa 7, I think, can be read a couple different ways. Um, we, can read, uh, we can read that first as like, uh, the first part is is unmistakable. Hitus Kassir al Idvali. The Asir uh, met with themselves, Hitus uh on uh e the valley now e the valley literally means like the plain of renewal or the valley of renewal or something along those lines vol is kind of a strange word um <clears throat> yeah and uh see i thought that it was uh and maybe this was just a misinterpretation from from what I had read, I thought it was like field of deeds or the, where, where deeds were done, like the either of all. And maybe again, I was just off on something else that I misunderstood. So you're saying that either of all is, it, it is a compound word, right? It is, an it is a compound. Uh, uh, the, the, the vol is pretty obvious. The vol is, is valley or something. Uh -huh. along those lines. Or field uh, or veil <laughs> or something, right? Yeah. But the, the, the is, is from, uh, is from a root id, uh, meaning renewal. Okay. Um, so, uh, and this is, I think, put forth by Jan de Vries, but I would have to double check on that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so, at any rate, the uh, that's not the problem. Then here now we have an issue. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you want, I can share some screen. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me, I let can, me, I can pop some stuff up here. Yeah. I'm actually going to stop my side because I'm, I'm pulling it from voluspa.org and that's an old Norse to English or English to old Norse or, or something yeah. iteration right. of it. Maybe you've got something better, something that's going to be easily um, comparable shared. to Com old Norse. Yeah. To the yeah. English. Yeah. I got Islam right here if, if you guys want to. Talk about it. Whiteboard. Give me a second to get my head and ask. Kind of wired together here. Yeah. For all the folks listening and watching, this is this is worth it. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Hitusk esir o ida veli tersk hur o huf o hof. Hotembrudu, Hotembrudu, right? Hotembrudu, Hotembrudu. Pretty good. 
I say like I was telling you guys before and for everybody listening, I was saying I was like, I'm going to let I'm going to let you guys that have been doing this, uh, that have more experience in, in, in reciting either Old Norse or Old Saxon do the speaking, because I feel like I'm I'm the kid on training wheels that just is like fumbling about <laughs> trying not to yeah. bust his ass. So, yeah, uh, I'll let you guys do the reading of, of the the uh, the Old Norse stuff. You don't mind okay so um <clears throat> uh the 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 one on the left uh is uh, uh codex regis um gks 2365 quarto um <clears throat> it is the older of the two uh but that means a lot of nothing um the uh, the spelling of Hatbruder there is is just a Fenner Jonsson thing. Um, the other version there is the other copy of Veluspa that we have from Hauptsbuch. Right? They are different mm. in a very in very fundamental way. Uh, one is there's <laughs> Er Hog. Okorf Potumbrudu does not exist in um, uh, Hauk's book. Hauk's book has Afel's post to do, uh, Als phrase to do. Uh, now, uh, what this verse is saying in Hauk's book is Hitus Kassi at all e the Bailey. We've got that. Uh, Afel's post to do, Als phrase to do. They tested their strength, their power, awful. Um, they tried Freista, everything else. All right. And then it goes on normally. Afla Logdu, Aldsmidu, Tangir Skopu, Oktogurdu. Um they uh, laid forges. Hearths, forges. Mm -hmm. uh, they smithed gold. Um, they shaped tongs, and they made tools. Okay. Um, so everything there is the same. Now, <clears throat> so it almost sounds. Sorry, real quick. Oh. It it almost sounds like that 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 secondary source makes it sound like it's a. Um, a field like it, it, that it's a place of work not a place of worship well yeah See, I mean, i'm just saying almost right i mean awful i think awful we're we're awful is like megan you know it's not main it's, the, the 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 might the or the yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. that okay. it's that inner kind of like the spiritual power kind of thing you know mm. so i think that's kind of what they're they're what's going on at least in in maybe the house book rendition because okay. i th think what we're dealing with with veluspa is we're dealing with like a veluspa tradition you know uh where there's multiple multiple different versions of this poem you know out there you know and i think there there is something to that kind of like the the vision of the cirrus kind mm -hmm. of kind of thing you know um <clears throat> excuse me but um uh so i think we have like variant versions of of this poem that we're getting that we're getting we're getting we have the the veluspa that's in codex regis we have the Veluspa that Snorri seems to be largely influenced by. Um, and we have the Snorri, and we have a Veluspa that is um, uh, Hauk's book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I wouldn't argue that there's probably not more, and actually Veluspa and Skama, which is a yeah. fragment of a, of a Veluspa-esque you know, kind of poem that is mm, not well written but you know yeah. <laughs> and it's very fragmentary um, i see you know so uh, uh but at any rate uh what i was getting at with this is is 
the 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 Codex Regis version, you know, over here. Yeah, the one that that says Theres Hurg Yeah. Uh Theres Hurg Okhof Um <clears throat> This can be re read a couple of different ways. Um, we can read this as uh, Er Horg. Because because we're having a problem with air, all right, and you don't see it in this because let me get rid of this thinner Jonsen version, okay, so it's easier to see this. Hold on. So the the is which and when is making the interpretation a little difficult with air in this this next one you're going to show. Well, it's it'll be easier to just see it. There we go. Oh, and, okay. And so before. there's an there's there's that um there's that air. Yeah. See, Finner Finner Johnson kept in his edition when he did his he 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 went out of his way to make the edit text look older. Than it actual than it kind of is mm -hmm. linguistically, um, so he kept like suffixing like articles on verbs and verbs to their he yeah he he did it on purpose. Um, uh, Good Neonson uh, also did a a edition of the Poetic Edda, um, and he did the exact opposite of that he tried to make the text look more modern icelandic uh -huh. um, so that is what these are like manuscript translations you're talking about right 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 now we can look at this on the manuscript level too if you want to. um <clears throat> you know but well, how much how much does it change from thers how much does that change from that to it doesn't it just makes it easier to see it okay because uh, because uh, so are we uh, is 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 <laughs> are we are we understanding that is her means a herg like a herger like an actual like what we would know in, in in heathen terms as being this pile of stones that were constructed as as a space to you know give gifts or, or or you know benevolence to the to the divine right like like a sacred space i think it's possible to read it that way but i think it's also to read it as referring back to either valley itself you know and referring to it as either valley itself is a holy pile of rocks i see so the 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 veil okay. the veil it's or the, the the valley itself right the the, right. the place itself was right. its own holy place so right. it's nothing that the gods Build, it was just that way already All right interesting you know, that's um, a very animistic kind of concept there right because mm -hmm. yeah. the other part the other part makes perfect sense to as as, as a sentence in and of itself Ther hatimbrudu hof they high timbered however you want to translate hof mm -hmm. you know i mean temple it's, building whatever yeah yeah, you know, some sort of structure where ritual was performed. Mm. You know, um, we can split hairs on how many people you could get in, <laughs> right? You know, or whether you got people in them or not. You know, yeah. Uh, so I think I think that is a possible way of reading this is that that you know we're we're dealing with like Horg, Herg in modern Scandinavian or modern Icelandic, I'm sorry, uh, is referring back to either Valley. Um, hmm. and, uh, and the other part of that is another thought, another kind of sentence. Yeah. Um, you know, um, that is a reading of that. We could also read that sentence. Uh, as they who 
temples, or I mean, well, uh, Hark, uh, altars, whatever, um, and temples high timbered, you know. Yeah, we can read it that way, and and that's the way many many translators have have treated that. Yeah, that sense, you know. Um, but I think it's possible that Herrick is referring back to either way. So I guess um, to kind so, of like, sorry, go ahead, Roger. No, no, uh, I was just going to say like, let's say, so, you know, but we've been here about a half hour. We could tie that into 20 because that's what you guys were talking about wanting to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess my 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 like in summary, um, or you know, uh, just trying to maybe get a a sense of of this is that it's a holy place. Obviously, Asgard it it, it is the realm of the Aesir. It is the the yard the the realm Asgard. It, it another compound word in the Old Norse, right? Os the gods, yard, <clears throat> Asgard yard whatever. It is the, the the realm of the gods. It is already a holy place, and yet in this holy place we have examples perhaps um, or, or references to things of of a holy uh connotation all right like there, there, there's something here that 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 points to like they're not just like it's not skyscrapers <laughs> you know what i mean like it ain't just you know <laughs> or is it or is it like the the realm or the the respective homes of the gods right like like through him or or like thor's uh not not through him but like you know what i'm talking about like the different homes of the gods the different right uh, places that yeah. that each god has like like thor has his place and you know uh uh whatever like balder whatever they had right a, a house right all these things and i think that's exactly what's what what's being referred to in that that particular stanza of, so so maybe it's not the fact that there are altars or temples that the gods are sacrificing to something greater than themselves are it's yeah. just that it's a reference to the fact that here in this place there are other things going on like there's yeah homes that are that, that exist of, of of the sacred perhaps right and i think i think what we're dealing with is like hey, well let me get a thought in real quick here Go ahead. um with talking about uh eat the bowler um it, it, you know i i thought to myself well what else happens at eat the bowler that's significant in the lore if this is this place that has potentially was already holy when the gods were creating everything then it, uh, i went and grabbed simek real quick and it says after the end of the world at ragnarok ethabolar is the place where the gods assemble in the new world mm -hmm. so it, that it, when everything's destroyed it's like the concept of that which is uh way holy is mm -hmm. it, it is still it, it cannot be destroyed you know so uh, know, interesting insight yeah um, that's an interesting well, uh part to to add to it yeah thank you right you know now i kind of think that's what's what they're the, the next kind of like referent to what you know might be going on with this like <clears throat> alters that they possible whatever the hell the high timbered hoof are mm -hmm. you know um i think the next logical step is to go to green the small you know and 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 because like what is it green the small four through uh what is it 17 16 17 somewhere around about there um where he goes all into uh the halls of the yeah. gods i think that i mean i'm not the first person <laughs> um who has ever put forth the idea that the that the halls that are mentioned in grim small are the zodiac you know uh, <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's like uh what is it? I mean, some of the most like kind of more recent ship and everything like that um, has been done by like Greasy, uh, ha, uh, Greasy Sigurdsson, uh, 
from uh, the Arne Magnuson Institute in Reykjavik. Uh, he is he's been doing some pioneering work in in um, sky lore and and you know all that kind of stuff uh, as it is a kind of like encoded in Snorri you know and he and 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 what they're kind of doing is 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 the the way Snorri maps out everything um, in um, uh, Gilfigenning mm-hmm. is is referring to like stuff that's going on in the sky, different yeah. cele- astronomical events, just you know, just the movements of stars and planets, and not and also like you know other things, you know, it's and, and what have. Yeah, there uh, are so <clears throat> many ways that humanity has told that story. It, so many ways, it, it, it's it all. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's such a primal thing, you know, and I don't want to get too far off track because we were we were getting some traction into into transitioning into the the, the 20th stanza of Voluspa okay. and, and how it relates to it. <laughs> but I do just want to add when it comes to like astronomy, sky gazing, sky lore, um, it, it I think it goes way back to some some very primal um uh beliefs or or, or or primal views on us as as a species or as humans in general. That don't even that don't even necessarily uh, are are that they're not specific to any sort of culture, right? I mean, we 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 see, you know, the right. the essence or and the value of fire, um, and and how when when we were as as a species, you know, all hunter gatherers, you know, at the end of the day, we would huddle around the fire to keep warm to 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 deter predators, and we would look up at the sky and we would see all these little glowing dots, and we would go, what the hell? You know, like it was it was fascinating. And and maybe there's this connection that we that we uh, can place with those little glowing dots up in the sky, the stars, the the the, the astronomical bodies, the celestial bodies that, that we see some sort of like similarities with like, well, here's our little like the, this fire is that glowing mm. equivalent. You know what I mean? Like they're looking down on us. We're looking up at them and they see all these little fires that our tribes and our little respective groups are, 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 are tending to, and we're seeing their fires that they're tending to. I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a wild thing to go down another rabbit hole on maybe at another time. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Well, we're about to go down some rabbit holes. I have a feeling. So, Uh, yeah. (laughs) Well, I think, I think before we get to, um, uh, verse 20 i think we need to jump to eight first um because i think it's <laughs> it plays I think if you're gonna look at 20 you better look at 19 before yeah because oh well, yeah we're be, yeah yeah i'll tell yeah. you what let me get <laughs> let me get some shit out the way because yeah, obviously nineteen is you know because twenty is thence come the maidens. Well, where thence do they come? They come right. from the place and and stands in nineteen, 19 is and twenty describing oh, yeah. the yeah for sure. There we go. All right, so so um, in verse eight, Tefo dui tuni teitir waru. War thane way to guess want or guli, uns trigger quamu, thursamoyar, all mat karmjork, or Jotunhamel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, this is the first arrival of uh, the uh, three are moyar, the three young girls. Um, and they are going to show up several different times. All right. Now, the first time they show up, uh, is here. Um, and they, uh, like put an end to the good times, you know, um, the Asir have, have, made some stuff you know mm-hmm. uh they they have some 
tools to play with. They've got some gold to hang out with. They've, they're hanging, you know, mm-hmm. they're chilling. It's good time, you know, Teffel Dewey Tooney, they're playing games in the hall, in the hall, you know, um, everything was great. You know, um, there was no want of gold, you know, until the three Moyar come. And in this case, they've come from Jotunheimer. Now, Jotunheimer, I think we get a little, like, bogged down Mm. in, like, these kind of, like, uh, like images that we see in like the books and on the websites and all that other kind of stuff where we have like some kind of like, you know, monstrous, almost mm-hmm. like, you know, something different than what the gods are uh, aesthetic to, well, to, to, to the Jotun. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, but we get this idea of like Jotunheim or is like this kind of like you know, evil place, <laughs> you know, or uh, dangerous place or, or, you know, what the, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I don't think we should probably hang out there too hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with Jotunheimer, we're dealing with like, uh, in this case, we're dealing with like out there, you know, it's th- they're from out out there <laughs> out yeah. beyond emir's eyebrows you know okay. just sure. out there somewhere um now in this case they are they are described as as thursa and i think that is just and i think that is just meaning that they are dangerous and and powerful um not necessarily like thursas you know, um, in the way Snorri we would interpret it. it. Right. You know, yeah, so, because I think wasn't it wasn't it wasn't really until Snorri got into involved that that the uh, concept of the, the giants or the thirst being evil inherently came into the mix. I mean, they were they right. are gods. They, they, they are of divine construct, at least to the, to the degree they just don't have the. I think the focus areas of 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 the AC or the AC are order, whereas the Jotun are anti order. There, there's it's more chaotic. Is that right? Is that is that a fair assessment, or, I think, or am I? Well, I think we got to worry like tossing around like order or chaos as kind of like these because. Really, when we think about this, when we really roll off all the kind of weird stuff, um, what we can consider as the Asir are probably maybe best understood as a war band of Jotnar, <laughs> you know? Hmm. <laughs> Because Jotun are, are just, I mean, they're all Jotun, you know. It just so happens that some of those Jotun uh, understand uh, reciprocity with humanity, you know, or at least, or yeah. at least reciprocity with with other beings other yeah. than themselves. Yeah, you know? in yeah. the sense that Jotun means eater, right? Right, right. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Jotun mean. Uh, it means eater. It, it giant is a horrible translation of that. Yeah, word. yeah, it is. Um, You're right. You know, but uh, uh, but so uh, the but I don't really think of them as like anti gods. Uh, the Thursar, those are much like the Asir are a war band of Jotnar. So are the Thursar. Thursar though are antagonistic towards us. Or well. <laughs> well us uh but like everything you know mm-hmm. i mean they are antagonistic beings mm-hmm. um you know and uh although they're you know they can they and their kin and friends 
live fine in their environment. Uh, we cannot. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we have, that's, that's an issue. Um, so at any rate, um, these, these, uh, these powerful beings, these, these three female powerful beings uh, come and like get the ass year off their asses mm. you know uh to not get too pointy but uh but because it even says in, in in the following verse first i think nine um thal gengareg and all all rock stola gen halo god okuntat gatusk then all the great holy counselors reagan is a weird word um went to their doom seats rock stola um the great holy gods gen hol gen god um and debated about about that amongst themselves you know mm -hmm. uh then they contacted dwarves all right Bereskildi Dwerga, throat umskepia, or Bremus Blodi, Oak or Blowens Legium. You know, who should have the dwarves, the people of the dwarves, uh, give form? Yeah. Um, out of the out of Brim's blood and out of blue one's legs. Um you know so so it's like now that now 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 so it's like they've 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 got all these things they had all these tools right they 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 made all these things and now they're playing and then here come these the these powerful female forces Beans. that that are like right. now go to work god damn it right like, <laughs> like quit playing right. games <laughs> right. i think that that's that that's the norms the those moy are 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 the norms I, that's what i think I think I think that's a I think that is a good enough word for them. I think, I think there's a lot of words um, in Old Norse that kind of like refer to these beings. Um, uh, Asinya, I think, is also a word that kind of refers to these beings as well, uh, as in Alkyria, um, <clears throat> but not. Uh, in all instances, sometimes the Valkyria are, are those kind of like battlefield, uh, you know, things of, of, of Odin and all that other kind of, you know. Do you think, uh, do you think that, I'm going to try to get this word right, uh, Gigur are the same as that as well? Ooh, I don't know. I have to, I have to look a little bit deeper into that. Um, That's interesting. You know. What's this now? What is that? What is that the, that you're referring to? Female, the giant giantesses is would be Gigur, right? Right, yeah. Rob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 like what? What Odin faces? Uh, like Gunloth, like that. Gunloth, uh, potentially Gerther. So Freyr's lover, Ooh, the, that one. That. <laughs> yeah, Gun yeah. Like, like if you, if you I don't know. Gunlod is described as being. I don't know if Gunlod is de is described as being a Giger. She's described, I think, as being just a just the the daughter of Sutton, you know, and and he's described as being a yacht you know okay see yeah you're, you're more familiar with what these beings are actually called in this language but you know even take like the 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 maidens of leafyaberg like the healing maidens of leafyaberg uh you know they're they're giantesses i think is what they're called in that poem of fjolman's mm. mall if i'm not mistaken but mm. you know are they kind of you know, with Disir, Valkyries, uh, Norns, they're they're and giantesses. Even in some some cases, there starts to become a thin line of demarcation. Yeah, I've I've heard that there's uh, or I've heard some people make the argument that you know there are more than just the three Norns. There is there are more than just Urd, Verdandi, and Skur. 
it, norns could be like a, a generalized term of, of, of like you say, Deser, female, right. ancestral <coughs> uh, well, I think, powers. I, th I don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, Voluspa 20, uh, I know I'm jumping kind of a little bit ahead of myself here, but uh, I don't think Voluspa 20 is, is giving us the names of the Nords like we think it is. Yeah, that's a fair, <laughs> that's a fair assessment. So can we, no. can we, can we, can we look at that stanza real quick, Rob? We can um, indeed. Cause that's kind of the, the subject matter that this comes from. And I think that would probably be a good place to, to land momentarily because you're right it doesn't it doesn't actually say norn or nornia or norns or anything like that right right it does uh, it yeah it does not it just says thence come the maidens it's it's they didn't come in media <laughs> yeah you you'll say it better than i could <laughs> those and and it's those it's implied those maybe more are again you know yeah, we, yeah. We, we had a we had them in verse nine um you know and and now we have them again in in verse 20 uh this time they're not thursa you know they're not destructive now they're very wise marks with tandy you know so thought then come by more are marks with tandy three are or them sad at um tholi stender now, Hulk's book has that a little bit different. Uh, Hulk's book has, instead of the word sa, uh, which means see, um, it has the word sal, which means hall, um, which makes, I don't know if it makes more sense, but it does make different sense. Um, but like so far in this we've got uh from there come the those maidens those three maidens three are uh very wise moderate with uh out of that sea or theme sack which stands under the tree uh er und tholi stender um now urd hey to ana Aldra where dandi skara opskidi all skidi skaru ini thridu fair log log do fair leaf coru other bonum urlock say so uh the usually that is considered to be like earth hate and uh aldra where dandi uh Urd, one one is called Urd, uh another is called Verdandi, um, and then schooled the third. Um I would ass I'm assuming, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and go into it just because somebody probably doesn't. Uh the the names Urdur and Verdandi are uh cognate to one another they are they they are they stem from the same verb verda in old norse uh mm. and that is spelled yeah that verb all right so verda. so that verb means to uh become uh you know um and uh right the things that are happening right the, the right. what is becoming uh, like what's right. happening becoming, in real time right what's going on what's happening you know uh urd is uh built from the past participle of that verb meaning her name means uh what has become um like what's already uh, happened essentially right. what has already happened what has uh -huh. turned what has come into existence already maybe um verdandi is the present participle of the same verb um and her name means what is becoming um and then schooled 
is from an entirely different verb, uh, which is this weird class of verbs called model auxiliaries. And they're, uh, the verb that school's name comes from is skulu, which means should or must or ought to or something like that. But it implies um, obligation. Mm. And uh, so uh, the the in um so before we hop there all right so uh in uh in 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 the 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 uh other other verse there uns three arakamu or thlidi ask it or all that all right so yeah uh, the 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 last uh, part of that or the last right. few lines so yeah. after after the dewer guitar all right um and and a whole bunch more things are made in throughout the cosmos you know um the scale of this is a little difficult <laughs> You know, um, so uh, he, in the process of like all the shaping that, do, that the dwarves do, um, they put together a bunch of living stuff, you know. The gods come, I don't know, inspecting the work, you know, okay, kind of thing. I mean, they 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 subcon, they they made some stuff. They sat back and chilled. <laughs> They're and they hired the dwarves as subcontractors. <laughs> it right. does. It feels right. like they're the GCs and right. They <laughs> their 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 investment, you know, people. <laughs> came in and kind of kicked him in the ass and they subcontracted out to dwarves and they got a whole bunch of stuff made all right then they're into you know coming around and inspecting their their handiwork and they find us whatever oscar and embla are here yeah. it doesn't say you know uh uh snorri um says you know, it, it implies that they're they're driftwood that's found on the beach. Um, you know, but uh, but that's not actually found in in Veluspa itself. Yeah, uh, it's just ash and elm, right? You know, and and difficulty with Embla. You know, Embla's name could not actually. I mean, well, and I actually think that's the case. It doesn't mean elm at all. Um, but rather mean is is related to the Greek word ambalos, uh, meaning a thick woody vine. Okay. Uh, um, you know, and that's where and that's where the B comes from. Uh, uh, and the uh, reason, right? Uh, that's that's the the problem. Uh, if you've ever heard about that, uh, where there's like that issue with like. Embla's name. It can mean either elm or it can mean vine. Um, and that's uh, a really interesting uh, point because not that I'm the greatest one to, to recall, but like where else do we see references to elm trees in lore? Right. Right. Uh, you know, the ash is obvious because it's, you know, I mean, there's right. the Yggdrasil, but, right. but anyway. Yeah. Not, but they, but at any rate, they they find like whatever, whatever Oscar and Embla were, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're uh, devoid we, of anything. And they got they, 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 well. I don't think they're devoid of anything. I think they're 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 missing certain key components. You know, uh, the shell and, is there, and, right? The shell is there. You know. Um, and then uh, the the god uh, they give them the the gifts, you know, and 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 all that. We yeah. we know the story. Yeah. Um, and those are very specific gifts to give 
Oscar and Embla. The power to control their Erla. Because I think it's all about Erla. <laughs> you know, it's all about that, those layers that you're going to lay down. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, everything lays those layers, but not everything has uh, willful ability to lay specific types of layers you know um so uh they are uh, uh they they give the gifts and all that other stuff all right then in uh verse 19 uh we usually <laughs> usually uh have that threat given to us as being uh a uh a uh, reference to uh, the name of, of the world, Yggdrasil, right? Right. Right. So, not surprisingly, <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it, I don't think it's what it's saying. Um, I don't think the uh, ask the Oscar there, I think the Oscar there is the same Oscar in the previous verse, um, or the two verses before. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you know, so Oscar is Ash, is it not right? You know, because I know Ash to stand. You know, I know she is saying the 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 the, the Volva in mm -hmm. this. She is saying I know Ash to stand. Right now. Yggdrasil yeah. is a weird ass word. Yeah, it is. In Norse. All right. Um, and uh, it is often translated uh, somewhat rightly as being like terror steed, you know, something along those lines. Um because drasil is like this poetic word that means like horse. Um, Thus saith Zoiga. Um, <clears throat> and Eeg is, is a known name of, of Odin. Odin. Uh, Eeger. Yeah. Uh, which, which comes from Uger meaning terror, you know, frighten or something. Isn't, like isn't one of his names or kennings is, is like the rider of the tree? Or because he hung from the tree, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so uh, so uh, the the Drasil part. The reason Drasil means horse poetically is because it, it's based on a root that means to support. You know, so it's the thing that supports or holds up something. You know, the tree, which is a kenning for a man. Right, you know, <laughs> right, and and how many places are you know men referred to by trees, you know, in in Kennings? I mean, by everywhere, yeah. <laughs> every poem, um, yeah, you know, so it's not uh, uncommon at all. Right, so we're dealing with like, uh, I uh, I think in this name, this name, um even though it should be Ixtrasil, you know, there should be an S in there. Uh, it is, I think, alluding to, it's it's referring to Oscar as being the support of terror. You know, it, it, I don't think it's she's saying anything good about us. You know, <laughs> honestly, imagine that. I don't think that the vulva is actually saying anything nice about us. You know, um, you know, she does call us, or at least him, uh, a, a, a tall tree, har badma. Um, and uh, now, we to our is 
strange, all right? Now, our is mud or clay or that. And I think that is kind of like referring to these kind of like layers of Erlaw, right? In a metaphorical sense. Wit Witter. Uh, White, right? Is, 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 well... It is cognate to our modern English word white. Um, and But at this point in time, it doesn't really mean like the color white, uh, mm. like we think of it. it. It's more referring to things that are like bright. Bright. You yeah. Know? Kind of like uh, how Heimdall was 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 uh, mentioned or, or as, as being the like, whatever. He was like the brightest of the. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, it's so it's the same word there, then, right? Right. So yeah, it's the same word. So so he is sprinkled with these like with this shining like layers. You know, the ability to lay down this kind of stuff, right? Thadan kama poma dugbar, thersa dalafala. There comes the dale, the dews that fall in the dales. Um, I think that is probably a reference to blood <laughs> and bloodshed and battle, to be honest. Mm. Um, so uh, like Kennings, basically, is what we're right. hearing here. Kennings, absolutely. Dews in the Dale is blood on the battlefield, perhaps. Absolutely. Maybe. Of course, it certainly can be, yeah. Right. And then Stander at Ether Grün Uderbener. He stands evergreen over the spring of, of what as turned what has come into being um and a and a bruner for those who don't really kind of know that uh, a bruner is that kind of like it's a spring head well it's a well built over like a spring head where there's moving water through it it's not one that you did not down stagnant in. yeah it's not a stagnant well it's a moving water um so that's kind of a visual sort of this thing. is just symbolism layered upon symbolism layers yeah. upon layers of symbolism you know so uh so in 19 uh our our predecessor <laughs> our our doing stuff they're blessed in their work they're sprinkled with white mud white you know, i mean is technical with mud there but um you know uh but uh i you know might be did do kind of the wrong things necessarily i don't know you know gets a little technical there but uh but at any rate um the the uh moyar return thadan kama moyar marks with time three are or them sap um tholi stender from that sea that stands under the tree now they are giving gifts to us all right the goddesses are giving gifts the the moyar Mm -hmm. are giving us you know the one the first gift that they give us is called urd uh and the other adra uh is called werden all right this i think is totally related connected to practice of spawn and divination and all that other kind of stuff in there this is how to see how actions reverberate you know what 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 well yeah i mean how what kind of how how things are reverberating yeah yeah um that is that is a fascinating interpretation yeah. No, I mean, keep going because I've got I've got something that's brewing in my mind that I want to say, but I want to wait for you to finish the rest of the okay. stanza before I say it. Right on. All right. So uh, they they scored on on thin strips of word, skither, uh, 
Skaruskidi. And then schooled is obligation. All right. It's it, it's one thing to like do a bunch of spa and get a whole bunch of like feel goody information that makes you like, I don't know, a happy heathen. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, schooled says you need to do that. You need to you need to enact that in the world. You need to make those things happen. You know, they're long, long through. They laid down the laws. They chose life. Fair. Kuru leaf. For the sons or of the with the sons of men. It's kind of that's I think it's kind of a with because it's a it's a uh uh use of the dative uh there all the born them. Um mm -hmm. you know, but uh I, I think it's a I think they did this in like conjunction, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh with things. And then um the the uh Urlog Segez is is like they they spoke the ancient, you know, they said the the ancient light layers. <laughs> so I kinda yeah. hard to yeah, it's kinda it's kinda hard to get like the, Urlog I, I, into like modern English. Because right. is weird. I, you know? I, I've heard I've heard people try to say, Oh, it, it's just the Norse equivalent to fate, and I'm like, mm, Yeah, no, it's not, not the so Norse much. equivalent to fate but those are people that that are largely i don't think really understand what the word fate means. so so here's where i was just, here's what i was trying to like here's the thing that was like mulling around in my brain as you were talking about this we are the shapers of weird we mm -hmm. are the ones that define you want to call it destiny fate whatever like because again it's it's hard to equivalent these words into a modern brain uh, into a modern thing but it's like we're the ones that are shaping it it's there there's a set beginning there's a set ending we're born and we die that's mm -hmm. it's it's the it's it's the start point and the end point all of this shit in the begin in, in in the in the middle we're shaping that we are the shapers of weird is is what i was alluding mm -hmm. to like as you were talking about like and what you were saying really kind of uh, reaffirms that in my mind it's like we have that power. We were given that power through this process, as it were. It's it's it, it was laid down in the creation myth for our primordial selves to have this power to shape life, to shape existence, to shape our own and the weird of others, of like the, right. everybody that we that we interact with, that we tie, you know interaction that ha how we have interactions with and all that we shape it yeah it, all right you know, and it, i think that's why we get those kind of like stuff with havamal where where we get those kind of like you know return gift for gift and you know treachery for treachery and lessings and all that other kind of shit you know if, and, if and you lie for that, lie. huh it, i was gonna say if, if you take your interpretation there that like like spall or divination or the ability to kind of see some of these strands in some type of magical way the reason that that is is such okay so with that gift and being able to do that in that a to b born to death and then we are shaping this weird um what you have is uh you have a debt too that comes with that with the ability to be able to to see that take place and 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 work on these abilities there's a debt to be paid mm -hmm. you know so the it's, it's almost like a like a a sorrow that you would carry with it right you know? well i mean right i mean well i think there is like you know, I think there's like a, a heavy thing to carry in, in those kind of like sorts of things. I think that's why like we have that kind of stuff in Havamal where where there's like, you know, better or oh better than say oh bloated. You know, it's better not to ask than to over 
sacrifice, you mm-hmm. know, because ever does a gift look for a gain. Always there to be on his gift, you know. Uh, better that old sentence, old so it better unsent than uh, over sacrificed again, um, you know. And 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 thunder and and the in the verse even says small thunder over it. Thus, this is stuff that owes and weighs down, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, there is that. It is it is a heavy, like, kind of contract sort of thing. I think that's what kind of that verb blow to, and this might be getting a little off topic here, but uh, but that's what I think that the verb blow to is probably referring to, why it's a different verb than yeah. soa, but they're both mean sacrifice, you know, Um it's clearly two different things so i think what's going on in with blota uh is is like fulfilling your your part of the contract you know uh you 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 go ahead i'll say could could it could it be that blota has the connection to like you're saying the fulfilling your part there is that that blood is needed there there is a blood connection there there's something of of a tangible connection within ourselves that is required for for that part of the of the sacrifice well i don't think i don't think we need to like associate blota and blood necessarily the uh, verb blota we know that we know that bloat was done with blood but blota is is its own thing is what you're saying well well okay so where do we know that bloat was done with blood uh okay so (laughs) maybe then i you know so okay uh to answer that i would say that there's um what is it uh is it is it in the hamstringler saga that 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 word particularly bloat is is mentioned that that bloat was done at like say yule right like bloat was was done oh, and, and that okay. that the blood was sprinkled I, I, and look i know that that hamstringla saga is is right at a certain period of time and you know we're we're we're, we're looking at the, the 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 christianity influences of, right. of, of things so maybe there's right. there's some bias right. to that but my understanding was that bloat requires blood animal blood not not human blood per se necessarily but i mean right we're, see we're, we're going off into some other see, things too i think i think this is where uh i think this is where christians got it wrong mm. but i think they but i but I, but by the time they were writing the sagas i don't think they were purposely getting it wrong i okay. think it was just they just didn't know what that word really implied anymore you know they knew they they had like stories in in their families where like their you know great great grand grandfather something yeah. like that when he arrived at iceland you know started like sacrificing or well started doing blota again you know or did blota and he was a great bloats mother or something okay, along so- this line so like when the saga says so and so and he was a great sacrificer that's going to say right. you know uh alcond war war uh mother right? right something like that okay right. you know so right so he's they're they're they they're by the time they're writing Hawkins saga and go the they don't they don't know this stuff anymore i mean it's you know i mean i don't know the heathen stuff anymore um or at least why uh so at any rate uh blota uh is it, it can involve blood it's here here's the thing uh it, it's in havamal it's it's coupled with with uh bidya all right, which is to to ask or something along those lines. So what you're doing is you're going to the gods and you're asking for something, whatever, whatever that is, right? 
Um, and in and you say as part of their the the thing, uh, I will give you I will give you three goats, you know, if 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 my crops do well, you know, what the hell ever. All right. My crops do well. All right. I give my three goats. That's bloat. Blota. All right. It can also be, uh, I'm going to, you know, I, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll raise a statue, you know, I'll raise a God pole, you know, to you in honor. If you, you know, if you grant me this, this, you know, wheel boon, whatever, you know, um, so there, you know, and, and, and then likewise, you get that wheel or boon or whatever it is. So you erect a God pole. You know, and you and you put some extra oomph into it. Time, you know? energy, resources, right. but not necessarily you know? blood all the time. But right. again, yeah, you're not you're not you're not gonna talk make a, a god pole that's this big. You're gonna make a god pole that's taller than your fucking house. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of shit, you know? Yeah. So I think that's I think that's what we're dealing with with like blota as far as a practice. Um it's the fulfilling of of the contract that you entered into with the gods mm -hmm. right or whatever you know because a lot of these people when we look at like Nala nama book and stuff like that where we get those stories of of like you know uncle anar who is the great bloat's mother kind mm -hmm. of thing right all these are are guys and families who just traveled from norway you know left everything that they knew behind mm -hmm. and settled in a new land you know they made it across the north sea alive yeah 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 they offered sacrifice when they got to land right well I, <laughs> you know yeah, they did <laughs> i think this would be a great topic maybe for the for the three of us or maybe more to get together just to talk about this very thing because i've done i've done enough content about you know the difference of of bloat or, or or sacrificing in 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 the context of bloat which was at the time i understood to be um blood must be present because of various source material that mentions mm -hmm. that that the hooger was bloody or that the you know the people were sprinkled with blood by the, the this thing that or the other versus you know um things of like let's say for instance uh uh the the, the account of uh of 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 of, of even fadlan with the swedish ruse where right. it doesn't mention that blood was was sacrificed, but that you know the Rus would would come and they they they, they arrived in port and they would prostrate themselves before this figure, this this god pole perhaps, and they right. would say, "Hey, you know, I I I I I I, I give you all these things in hopes of getting something back." There was there was this reciprocity understanding. There was I'm I'm giving you monetary goods mm -hmm. that I could potentially use for myself, but I'm giving of them to to this you know the, the to the sacred to the divine uh mm -hmm. and it was clearly like milk honey grains whatever it wasn't it, there was no mention of blood so there was difference so so we, we have examples of things like you know uh that uh which, which could maybe be defined in in modern times as like a not just feignings i right. think maybe or, or just or, or offerings yep. but that would be a really cool i think topic to d deep dive into um uh separately because that again like we're we're getting into some really heavy duty stuff with that um, and, and it's fascinating to me because again, I, I, I come from a, a background where I'm like, well, blood bloat, if you're going to call it bloat must have blood there, there seems to be a, a mis not, not a misunderstanding, but there seems to be enough understanding here amongst us that I could be wrong and maybe wrong and, yeah, and like not all, our, not at least not in every case. Right. Our group up here, particularly, we don't, we don't get too hung up on if there's not blood calling it feigning we we generally call everything we do is is a bloat and, and we haven't had blood yet at one of them yeah so and yeah, if it works I mean, then it works yeah I, it, a lot so much of this terminology gets really mushy but but so as a whole different now there i think we are dealing because soa has 
now that verb has like horrible connotations and in, in modern Icelandic. Well, not horrible. I do but. think though, with this, like we're getting into this Havamal stuff, this could be a whole nother. Oh yeah. Discussion. I could, I could, I could, I could dedicate a whole podcast about that because that stands at 144, you know, like that right there. I could, I could, that, that, like, that's my jam. It's, it's a whole ritual <laughs> formula. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I think that's that that 144 that is a wonderful verse because that does kind of open up these kind of like ritual processes. I mean there's there's stuff that's in there that is like specifically magical, you mm -hmm. know. Uh and then there's stuff in there that is like religious. You know? And so soa is like that verb that's kind of like it 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 means like bring things to an end it's it's a killing them up yeah yeah whatever <laughs> and i like how you i like how you made the other mystical stuff and and yeah 138 to 145 sorry to interrupt the, jesse no that's fine the rune at all right or the yeah that that, yeah. that section of the home mall yeah no it does because and i like how you mentioned that it was uh magical versus religious there are they are definitely separate Parts of it can maybe interact, but magical yeah. working is different than religious working, which is different than, to me at least, than than spiritual mm -hmm. stuff. You know, like the the, the spirituality of, of of a person is is not necessarily uh, all encompassing of of their religiosity. I like right. that. I've never heard it yeah, said that way. I've always kind of conflated the two, but but you're you're right when you think about it. You know, getting together with a group for religious worship is different than your day-to-day -day spirituality which is certainly different from working magic so right, right. Yeah. i mean i think it's a little hazardous to throw around terms like religious and magical and all that kind of shit uh especially when we're dealing with like heathenry but <sighs> my you know, my thing was always I mean, that <laughs> i guess it works I mean, my thing was always <laughs> that uh, if you're talking about anything of a religious nature, then the gods, the divine, the sacred, uh, they're involved. Mm. I'm just giving my definition. When and and so spirituality uh, is is more of you know the things of perhaps our our dealings with our ancestors, the the Vetir, um, mm. localized whether it be Kof gods. Again, whites uh, slash Vetir, you know, th th that term, I guess, could be interchangeable. That, that, that to me was always more tapping into the realm of spirituality. And then magical stuff is, is very, very centralized around hearth cult um, practices and, and things of, of individual cultic practices that um, don't necessarily involve more than just what's underneath the roof tree. Right. To me, I don't know, you know, that's how I was dissimulating it all. <laughs> if I had to. Well, I, I've always looked at like magic as, as you are now trying to like, you know, Crowley's definition of create change in conformity with will is kind of what I think magic is. And I mean, mm. sometimes I do magic. I'm, I'm going to do magic before too long with this aforementioned rune white that I'm making. Uh, right which is a so, cultic so, practice of you right well that, yeah a, i definitely developed my my mode of of operation with how i like to do these kinds of things they you know i was looking at my runic inscription i drew it on before coming on here and it's like you know you can tell when i write runes i just they, they look the same <laughs> it's like a signature like my handwriting yeah <laughs> oh yeah. i mean I did magic tonight before I got on with you guys. I I, I I put a bunch of 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 things into a centralized pot and I and I used fire to sear the flesh of a deceased animal and then I consumed it ritualistically, which is what I call dinner. Right? I was in the kitchen. It's magic. I did that <laughs> same ritual. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. Look at that, you know. My, mine was look more like pizza, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, like I mean, we could define it in so many different ways, and it you know it, it hits home. Um, this was great, guys. I I think this was a, a phenomenal 
you know, so I think if we wanted to summarize things as best we could, because we we've gone on for a while now, but I mean, if we wanted to summarize things, I think one of the things that we've almost uh, settled on is is this concept of uh, the the gods in Asgard having a temple or or a hearth or an, or an altar to sacrifice to may not be what we're looking at here. What we may be looking at here is just the fact that the place itself is sacred and holy and there are great powers involved at the, you know, through the really through, through the uh, reading of the Voluspa that uh, are, are drivers that are catalysts to achieving uh, certain things. And, and part of that process involves humanity, mankind, um, OSC, if you will, the, the, and, and we ourselves are, uh, imbued with power to shape things is that a fair we are given some very important very very important gifts you know mm. and the goddesses the three are moyar they come and they give us a way to be thoughtful mm. about it you know and yeah. not just act out of impulse you know and i think you another know, like big in, in, in those yeah. early stages of creation in voluspa with with the way that it was it was read tonight it's like as the gods were ordering things they came upon eat the volar and recognized it as something that was already holy that didn't need to be purified it was it was just that way already and then it then it then it comes back at the end of ragnarok you know mm -hmm. it, it's I, I love that idea i just love mm -hmm. that idea i think we're dealing with like evil or just kind of a side little footnote here uh, there's also uh the the realm that the dwarves dwell in um is called svartalfheimer by uh snorri but that's only in Snorri, you know, and, and only occurs one time. Uh, so, you know, um, but a place that is referred to numerous times uh, referring to the dwarves is uh, called Nidavol. And it literally means below the valleys, under the valleys, you know, so what you're dealing with is like, I think what we're dealing with is kind of magical separation here, but mm. above you have the, the idvil, you have this shining realm, shining, powerful place of existence where the gods and light elves and all that other kind of stuff dwell. And then below that, nidvil, below the valleys is where you know, um, the the and the shapers and other subterranean chthonic sorts of whites are are you know engaged, mm -hmm. and uh, and we dwell in that kind of like that. We have access to that area, that middle, that middle ground. We mm -hmm. have access to it, and that's probably what our ancestors saw in like, you know, mountains and caves. You know, mm. and everything like, and I mean, like, not just our ancestors, like Viking Age. I'm talking like our ancestors. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, ancient you know, ancestors. Yeah, before it all. Know, yeah. Um, we're so, seeing those kind of like journeys into the underworld, and that, and we see uh, vestiges of it. I think in like Lasco and Chauvet and all those other painted caves. You know, but that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. We ought to see about getting Scott on with us and do a podcast and have a chat. I, it, it would be deep. I know, would it. love to have Scott on here. I've, 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 I haven't talked to him directly, uh, at least in a very long time. But I, I've, I've mentioned to him about coming on here, and it was just kind of like, "Hey, would you like to come on a podcast?" And he was, he was receptive to it. Um, yeah. But to have like something of 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 this degree of of granularity, like go into stuff like this, I think would be. Hell of fun, man. It, it, it'd be such a good time. And I do just want to say real quick too, like for everybody that, that does listen and, and watch this, you know, 
all of the stuff that that we spent all this time talking about um look at look at the amount of of uh years look look at first of all look at the years behind this degree of of uh analysis and then look at the combined you know somebody here from who's been who's been heathen you know for for 40 years you know, or going on and and, and myself and, and and everybody else like it's just the the, the the differences and it's it, it, <laughs> there's there's nothing i don't think that we could walk away from here and say well we figured it out guys this is it um right. it's 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 largely if not entirely um shared upg right um as long as we're as long as we're coming into it saying as such but i think that a lot of what is being shared here is deeply rooted in um strong source material in terms of like the, the the linguistics part of it right like i don't mm -hmm. know nearly as much as as, as rob does here about the, the linguistics the behind it you clearly language is impressive very impressive <laughs> you know i mean he clearly knows his way around the the linguistic side of it which does really help paint uh, a clear picture of of how we should be looking at things or or, or or way to look at things um because you could come up with all kinds of stuff which has clearly been done over the centuries you know everybody's mm -hmm. has come up everybody's come up with their own ways of, of looking at things tonight right. we, we we got a chance to really do a deep dive into what in the hell are the words that are being used here what do they mean what could mm -hmm. they mean how could they be interpreted and then what does you know what do we get from it all and, and, you know, one of the things uh, about, I, and I know Rob, you know, I love the poetics and, and the, the double meanings and stuff. And, and in the little bit that I know about Old Norse and, and have looked at some of these things poetically, they love to throw stuff at you that could be interpreted a couple different ways. And they knew what they were doing. And that's what made a good mm -hmm. poem. And so now right. we're scratching our heads a thousand years later, learning a little bit about Old Norse. <laughs> way away from the culture, way away from the original understandings of it. And it is absolutely uh, an enigma wrapped in a conundrum. And it's fun. <laughs> it Floating is, in a sea of riddles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that it is. Cause you know, that's a good point, Roger. I mean, like the ones that wrote it all down, I mean, they knew what they were talking about back then. And they're like, Watch this, guys. You know, I'm gonna do. I'm watch, watch, watch what I'm about to do. They're they're gonna really love this when whoever it is that reads this, you know, whatever, you know, a year, two years, a thousand years down the road, who they, how would they have known how long it would have taken for this to to be analyzed? Uh, you know, there was no way that these guys or gal whatever would have known that we, people no, over the internet no, would have been they talking would have about. Never this. thought we'd be this interested in this stuff. <laughs> no, you know, twelve hundred right. years later. Exactly. <laughs> and they and and we have such a fragmentary, you know, version of it, you mm. know, it's like just. It's like somebody uh, I can't remember who was uh, put forth the analogy that it's like, you know, we're we're uncovering we're archaeologists uncovering a shipwreck, you know, I think in a lot of respects, we don't even know if we have ship parts. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. we don't, I mean, we don't, we don't even know if that's what we're on yet. Could have been an airplane. Right. Like, it could have been an airplane. It could have been, <laughs> it could have been a flying fucking saucer, you know, <laughs> right? you know, so I think there's, I think there's like, UPG is such a weird thing. I think you is one of those like necessary things because everybody uses it. Academia uses it. Everybody uses it because all of this is, is, but I think UPG is something that grows out of the lore, not something that works in opposition to it. You mm. know, uh, we can't go with, I don't think we can as modern heathens, uh, approach this as going like okay well my upg is whatever you know doesn't matter <laughs> uh, yeah don't discount therefore, it therefore you know something that is in voluspa is in direct opposition to it so voluspa is wrong you know 
no, <laughs> that's just not really how that works. I think what we get is is as we like our our connection with with the the lore, both 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 at us um, uh, grows. Uh, those connections start to form. So we had these kind of connections like, well, what are these altars and temples that, that, that the gods are, are making? What are the, what are these? You know, it's possible that it's green, that it's referring to something in green to small, you know, that's also referred to in green to small, where it's, you know, we're talking about the they're building the their own homes. halls of the gods, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I mean, now, what the halls of the gods are is a little bit more speculative. You know, what we're probably dealing with uh, is some sort of like Germanic astronomy, for lack of right. a better. With know, uh, astrology. You right, know, right. That's, is, that's a whole yeah. UPG thing, too. Right. But, it, but it's one of those things that is so, so rooted in the core like you were saying earlier jesse we're you know we're looking up at the sky and we're seeing their fires and they're looking down and they're seeing ours it's so rooted in the core of of humanity that that it, to, to pull something out of it like the the halls of the gods being the the uh the zodiac it, it's yes it is upg but it's worth looking at upg is definitely it has value. So, for instance, like I, I got uh, Eric Westcote's book, The Eagle's Mead, which is really super grounded in lore. It's his poetry as he worked through the Nine Doors in Midgard, and he's a master in the Rune Guild and everything. And now this, this is his modern interpretations, his experiences with everything. But you go through and you read the poetry and you're like, Fuck yeah, bro. Good mm -hmm. stuff. You know, um, right. yeah. So, so it, it has value, you know, people that, that just, oh, it's UPG and they turn their ears off. It is the wrong approach. Yeah, no. Right. And, that, and that's the whole thing to me is like, I, what, what I, when I whole thing is that UPG is absolutely valid as long as we're clearly defining it as such. Like what I'm trying to say is like, Hey guys, I don't think we're we we've reached the point that that what we've deduced tonight is 100% fact. I mean, we're literally analyzing <laughs> lore. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, right. let's get real. Like, but it, it's it. I think we've we've reached some really phenomenal things. And thank you, Rob, for for being such a great you know leader in this in this endeavor tonight with which you know the linguistic aspect and 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 talking through it all. You've you've done a phenomenal job. I'm excited on watching this whole thing replay i think people that have watched this up mm. to this point are, are going to be really enthralled and i would love to have more stuff like this recurring on this channel and on this podcast to talk about things like you were talking about like the the, the connection possibly between the, the the halls of the gods and its potential correlation to astral bodies or or astronomy in a dramatic sense because i don't think we really know that these people had a, a uh, that that sort of vision, unlike the Greeks or or some of the other cultures that that clearly were very astronomy driven and and you know like all of the astral bodies that we have names for are from those cultures, right? I think it's a really fun thing to to tap into and explore for, well, for a lot of people. I think a lot of the the ideas behind like the the astrological approach to this um <clears throat> is there they're looking at like the stuff in the in in snorries in gilfaginning where you know yggdrasil yggdrasil itself is the milky way all right mm -hmm. the arc of the milky way that we see through the sky uh the uh the the four uh deer that eat at its um are like likely specific constellations or at least start using constellation i don't want to like 
make connections with like modern constellations because they may not have necessarily seen those same patterns in the sky. Uh, but everybody has seen patterns in the sky. <laughs> sure. You know, I mean, every, every, every culture yeah. globally, you know, I mean, what I'm saying, you like before you just it. lay back and you, you know, you got your fire burning, right. you're, you're trying not to right. die. You got a fire burning to keep the predators and all that away. Like just primitive man or whatever, you know, exactly. they were there just looking up at the sky going shit. Look at that. Right. And Look they had nothing. To, right. They had nothing else to talk about other than what the hell's going on up there or above them. So there's a word I was wondering if you could maybe, right. uh, be, you know, and as we get close to wrapping up here, there's a word that that has recently come into my vocabulary. And I don't think there's, you know, anything of, of particular um, uh, source material. But I, it, again, a compound word. Um, uh, Stear the court. Star map. Mm. mapping of the stars I right? and and the, the reason why i wanted to bring it up or, or give it you know something to ponder about is um i i will be uh venturing off into the the mountains of appalachia later this year to partake in a sort of um ritual uh, uh of of a retreat of, of of sorts with with dear friends and 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 by all intents and purposes brothers uh, and and family, you know, extended kin and kith of 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 my of my family, um, and that's kind of the theme of of this year's retreat is to is to look to the stars and 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 see the. Is this a word that has been constructed for this retreat? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. Cool, Again, I am saying that there's nothing I don't think you can look up and find, but Stjarna, Stjarna Court, star map. <laughs> Right. Uh, okay. something like that probably so. wouldn't be surprised if it's not it's been a long time since i've looked at that saga but there's like a saga it's called the saga of star Audi. um and it's i mean that's really what it is is a is a book on astronomy uh written in icelandic mm -hmm. uh, uh but it is not at all uh like heathen germanic it's not okay. yeah it, they, it's everything is like sagittarius and gemini and you okay. know all those kind of like modern well not modern but but babylonian greek you know mediterranean zodiac names yeah, right you know, and all that other stuff and and so you know and and that's just a and it's late it's i don't remember what but i think it's, it seems like it's in like the 15th maybe 16th century is late you know yeah so you know but there was Pretty I mean, they were yeah i mean it's it's a whole lot of speculation but there was everybody who has ever looked every culture that can see the sky has told stories about what's going on in it yeah you know yeah uh, it's yeah, us no looking I think you're right. It's us looking up at the realms of the realms of the gods, just like them looking down at us. You know. Well, it is definitely a fascinating uh, concept, and uh, for for everybody listening, watching today, I hope that this was the, the extra time that we spent going into all this. I hope that it was um, a a edifying thing. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that that pause, come back, revisit it, whatever. <laughs> Right. Like so many things, it's like, uh, hey, I, I can't spend all this time yeah. just watching this. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing just because I'm like this. Right. This for me, I mean, just it, it's early in the year. But I mean, this this for me in, in terms of the whole catalog of podcasts like this, this ranks up here as as probably one of my most meaningful and, and enjoyable conversations. This this was this was great. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, I really thank enjoy you. this too. <laughs> I am honored, Jesse. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's great to be for runestone and and twin rivers to become friends of yours and to be forging these these ties of frith and we gotta again man we gotta get it off the internet and and meet in person one of these days and and yeah. have some fun and and drink some meat and all that yeah, good absolutely stuff. man absolutely <laughs> you guys aren't too too far respectively speaking from from Not where i bad. am I, I I've traveled farther for less, <laughs> you know, Right. <laughs> we'll make it happen someday. We, we've all got our, our, you know, means of communication. So 
Um, if you guys don't mind, just hang out for a minute. Um, I'm going to wrap this up on the podcast for everybody that's listening and watching, but don't go anywhere, you guys, because I want to touch base with you before we leave. Um, right. But yes, everybody that's listening and watching, you know, um, Runestone Heathens uh, of Ohio, the link for that group is going to be linked in the description. So all of the stuff that, you know, we talked about tonight, you know, these are guys that are active in that Facebook group. Um, so the link to that Facebook group is going to be annotated in the show notes of the podcast and in the description of the video. So be sure to check it out um, and be sure to follow this podcast for for more stuff, because I feel like we're going to be doing some some more stuff with you guys um, of, of, of a similar nature. And so for all of you that are listening and watching, thank you so much for your support. Be sure to follow, like, share and subscribe. Do all the things that the fickle algorithm gods demand that you do. <laughs> And until we see each other again, may the gods burn continue. sacrifices to them. <laughs> do it all. Just do all the things, you know. And if and if you're you're worrying about doing too much, then you know, figure that out later. Throw your vanquished enemies at their feet. <laughs> do it all. So yes, absolutely. Thank you all so much for watching and listening to today's episode. May the gods continue to notice you, and may your Hail. ancestors smile upon you. Hey. <laughs> Thank you.